turn on my video. Okay. All right. I definitely use food as a reward. It's a reward for everything good from having a great day, working out hard, special celebrations, etc. We didn't have tons of sweets growing up, so I learned to eat treats fast, high food, and eat it when no one is around. I would say that the majority of my bad food eating is done alone, when family is gone or in bed, when I'm in my car, etc. I'm trying to think about how I feel after I eat. I don't think I feel sluggish after pizza or crash after sugar. The only thing I can think of is that I do get an upset stomach after ice cream, so I don't eat much ice cream. I guess I'm trainable, haha. -ha. But it's difficult to stop eating other foods when I don't feel physically bad after eating them. I'm sure my constant grazing keeps me from feeling the after effects of what I'm eating. I want to be able to eat anything without guilt. I understand that there are foods that are bad for me, but I'm tired of this psychological and mental beating I give myself. If I eat sweets or snacks or fast food, not to say that I want a free pass to eat those things, but I feel like I've been a mental punching bag for 35 years. The mental abuse you give yourself, or at least I do, is tiring and breaks me down. My eating and drinking has been rough this week as I'm sick, pretty Pretty good with getting most of my water, although today was tough as I have a sore throat and don't want to swallow. I've eaten every snack item in the house because you want me to, haha. Ha. It's funny that I think going in and grabbing a handful of chips is easier than going in and grabbing an apple. Supposedly eating snack slash junk food is easier to eat than fruit or vegetables. Why do I think that? Truly what is in my brain that makes me walk right past the fruit bowl to the pantry. I think that's all. And then she'll share with us during the talk if she has more input. Oh, yeah. okay. oh many of us have felt the exact same way. Have you guys felt that you just have this weakness and you, you, you don't know why? You know mentally in your head that you're supposed to be eating good and you know what is good, but you just walk right past it and go for, for the jump food. All the time. Everybody's shaking their head. Yeah. Okay, Please. testing. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Oh, we, I hear you. we got you. Okay. Here. Well, here's the problem. It's um, now I'm probably too loud. Uh, the no, earphones, no. my my ear canals are really little, so the iPhone earphones don't stay in my ear. So now I have to hold that in my ear and hold the phone. Isn't that rad? I, okay. <laughs> Oh, it's in there. Okay, I'm not going to move. All right. You can hear me. So good. Okay, here we go. Carry on. So did you have something to say about what Andy wrote, Andrea? Um, well, you know, um, I, I, I just got, um, I just got gaps of it because I was being selfish trying to get my um, mouthpiece all situated so that I could speak, but I didn't hear the whole thing. I heard that she has a lot of, um, that she's given herself a lot of guilt over the years and beaten herself up about what she's been eating. Is that the overall situation there? That and she also, yeah, that's a huge part of it, which I mean, I, I absolutely relate. I think all of us relate, whether it's mm -hmm. with food or with something else that we think, you know, that, that isn't healthy yeah, for us. That right. Indulge on. Um, she also talked about how, you know, mentally she knows that she should, you know, when she's feeling a little hungry or something, she'll walk right past the apple and go eat some chips or something instead of um, picking the healthy choice, even mm -hmm. though she knows mm -hmm. that she should, mm -hmm. for some yeah. reason, sure. she goes to the unhealthy. Mm -hmm. um, do you, have you felt that way, Andrea? Oh, yeah. I mean, it just depends on my mood, you know. And then when I go to the unhealthy, I, I, I'll either, you know, as I'm passing, the, I, I might beat myself up afterwards. But, but if I decide to eat the chips, I'm tuning out and I'm eating the chips. You know, that's just how it goes. Yeah. So it's different now because I have to pay attention and I'm not really eating chips right now. But, but you know, for lack of a better whatever, junk food. Um, yeah, yes, definitely. I think, I mean, can we all say that we've done that? You know, yeah, feel bad I think and, so. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, all of us. It's it's something, you know. She she also mentioned that she isn't really feeling the effects of like um, pizza, or she she said she doesn't really feel sluggish, or and and I'm wondering if maybe you she's getting enough water from her pizza. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm just wondering. You know, we're, yeah, me. we're still in the, the, the... Yeah, it's it's still really early, I think that, exactly. you know. We're in the early stages. We're trying to train ourselves. And the, the further we get into the program, the louder the voice will be. The mm -hmm. louder the voices will be. And then totally. also will become more clear. Sure. Um, you and know, I, so, I, I, go ahead, Tammy. Right now, when we want something, we're going to find a way to have it. I learned something last night. In the middle of the night, I got up to get cookies. And I grabbed two. Oh. And, I got back, and I went back to bed and I ate a bite, the first one. And it tasted disgusting. But I had pulled them out of the package so I made myself eat them. And I, I wonder... And and then Eric's video today talked about that. Like you'll buy something, so you'll eat it because you bought it. And right. it's supposed to taste good, so you just tell yourself it's okay. And it's not. I mean, yeah. it's or you don't want to waste it. Right. Yeah, or you don't yeah. want it. Did you pay attention like, to that longing, to that that feeling of like you want something and you want it no, because I was asleep. I wake up often and I, I sleep. <laughs> I'm sleepy. So I got up and I go straight to like the cupboard where I have crap food. And there was cookies. And apparently over the last couple of weeks, I've eaten the whole bag. So this in morning, the middle of the night. Yeah. So <laughs> in the, in the morning, I got up and there was one left. And it was still sitting out. And I realized this sucks. It really actually was so gross tasting that I threw it away. Too bad I didn't figure that out when the package was full. All right. <laughs> but this is what this week is about. I want you to pay attention to that. I want you to, you know, often it's the, it's the, um, the initial giving yourself permission and you're getting the, 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 the feel good from giving yourself permission. And that once you've made that decision and you go eat the, you go grab that food, a lot of times we're not, we're just unconscious, unconsciously eating. We are, we're, we're, I'm curious if when you, were you literally sleep eating or you were just so out of okay, it? I, I, wake up in the middle, out? I wake up in the middle of the night. And there's no rhyme or reason for what I choose. I don't think about it. I just do it. It's like I wake up in the middle of the night and I think, I'm going to do what I'm not supposed to do. Because I'm a diabetic. I'm not supposed to be cooked ever. You know? And it's really funny because when I mess up like that, I'm like, I, why would I take insulin? I don't need insulin. I just need these crappy cookies. So, basically, it tasted awful, and that was the good news. I, I, there's, there was no other thought. So you made a great point. There is, you know, you you kind of want that power. I can do what I want. I'm oh yeah. To go get the cookie. So a huge part of it is is the feel good part is is the permission. That's a yeah. I mean, we don't can much in life, so that's one thing that I can control. Hey, Sandy, so, you're, you're breaking up uh, a bit and you have been, I want, do you think your Wi-Fi is spotty in your room? What do you think there? I, I think it's possible, but I have nowhere else to go. I have nowhere else to go. <laughs> so, you're struggling with, you want the freedom, you want the power, you want to make your own choices and nothing's gonna stop you you want it you're gonna do what you want that's why i think this this program will work for me plus i i have psychological problems like everyone else. i associate food with love and all that other stuff 
which is great yeah. that you're noticing that and realizing that. And, you know, it, it, it's not our fault. It's not our parents' fault that they did this. The, the food industry is so tricky and so sneaky. Did anybody read that article that John I need to, posted? I, all my glasses. Oh, so not yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, he, he, yeah. he briefed over it last night, and you guys kind of got the gist of it. Uh, you know, it, the, the, the same thing is, you know, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but in the, in the dairy industry, one in five cows has a severe udder infection. They're given antibiotics yeah. for it, and the, the antibiotics don't work anymore on them. And they live with these severe Ugh. infections, and they have pus. And um, well, the, the dairy industry actually went to the FDA, and they increased the, the white yeah. count, the amount of pus that is in our- Allowed, allowed. It, is, it was, just, it was yeah. increased, you know, so to, to help the dairy industry. Yeah. And we're told, you know, it, that's one little thing Get in your head. You know, you're drinking pus. You're eating pus. That's gross. I know. It's gnarly. It's very gross, but I don't want you to stop eating it. I want you to, you know. That's going to be a little difficult. <laughs> put that in your head when you are eating. Your feta cheese. I want, I want that to be part uh. of your little angel telling you, but that's pus. But, you know, people still have, they, they're aware of that and they don't care. They're going to still eat their ice cream because they're going to convince themselves that it's good. Later, they might go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. You know, the, 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 the food advertising, the, the, did you know, um, where the, 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 Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I should probably slow down, but the four food groups came from a man named Kellogg. You know, um, he was trying to get grain in the diet. If you do a little research on it, they created these beautiful flyers and marketing and they, they that is actually where the food groups, the four food groups started. Do a little research on it. It's very interesting the way that they mess with our minds and, and get us to like these things. So, you know, like John said, is the sugar industry paid to get get it uh, kind of the studies hidden, and they really pushed that it was fat that was causing heart attacks, and it, it, it they're finding now that sugar is is a huge huge detriment to our to our diet, and you know it's funny we we keep hearing. One minute red wine's good for you, and the next minute red wine's not. And then you know, there all these foods are just always confusing us. What's healthy for us and what's not healthy for us? Fat is your friend. Good fat. There is bad fat. Right. So yeah, right. Fat, True. We need, True. We need. And people think that you know, by by cutting your calories and cutting your taking all these things out of your diet is going. To, you help you and having super low fat diet our bodies need the fat we need that nutrition and and that's always just a temporary fix most people that go on a diet they lose weight they end up going off the diet and gaining that weight back plus three pounds that's the average yeah. and they are all getting in our head it's it's all about marketing it's all about making a buck and this is, this is why we're really right now trying to pay attention to how, how we talk ourselves into it and trying to relate. Uh, so this is really funny. I was thinking about this. So think about after, I mean, I've done this with my kids. I, I used to coach softball and I, do, you know, I did this with, we would win a game and would, let's go celebrate. I'm taking everybody out to ice cream or, you know, um, some other junk food place, McDonald's. And think about how do the kids react when they hear, oh, we're going to go do ice cream. Woohoo! They're so excited. They get that, that, that little rush of excitement and they feel so good and they're so excited the whole way there. So for when we get older, we associate ice cream or McDonald's or whatever with 
celebration or, you know, if you're having a bad day, well, I remember as a kid, I would go get some ice cream when I wasn't feeling so good. So you go and do, you, you, they get, it, it's great how they pull you in with the advertising and, and like I was talking with Andrea, like a Coke and a smile or, you know, with the Marlboro man would get you to smoke or, you know, if you, I really want you guys to pay attention to the advertising too, because it's not our fault that we're like this. It's not our fault that we're struggling with health because look at our food. When my grandparents were young, there wasn't all this crap in our food. You know, it was good, healthy food. Well, on top of that, we, you know, we didn't have to have two parents working and, <laughs> you know, we, yeah. 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 So I, it, it's so important that we really, I was, I was laughing too, because we'll talk ourselves into something. You, it, it was just um, like last night. It was kind of funny. If you think about when I said, okay, Andrea and Sandy and Justine, I want you guys to go, go get Mexican food tomorrow. I want you to go do it. And you guys were so excited. I mean, it was kind of funny just watching the euphoria that you, this instant, like, oh yeah, we're going to go. It's like a feel good. Like we're going to go treat ourselves. Just, I'm just trying to get in your head a little bit and see, you know, it's kind of funny. And, and you know, any excuse that we can get, we're going to give ourselves that excuse. No, I went and had Mexican food. That's I did. Awesome. By yourself? Yeah. No. Well, no. Wait, what, what, what? Say again, Sam? Rich and I had Mexican Oh, okay. But had not mentioned it i wouldn't have done it just kidding melanie <laughs> but anyway you, you go it, sandy you kind of like were you like oh yeah let's go rich because uh, you know well also i i have mexican food three or four days if i can yeah so i i yeah. mean i did it i make it home and i eat at taqueria guadalajara all the time oh i yep. know that yep. place well mm -hmm. It's so, just, I, I, now I'm trying to think of like, you know, what am I going to be able to eat there? Hi, can I have a side of lettuce? You know? <laughs> we are they have a fajita salad, Sandy. Yeah. And you know, if but you just put their yet. salsa. Yeah, I know. We're not taking anything. Yeah, we don't even know what we're talking about. You can eat so, whatever you want. Exactly. Yeah, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I don't even know what I'm going to be able to eat yet. So We'll figure I'm, that out when we get there, but I'm yeah, curious. Yeah about your conversation with yourself? Well, you know, I, I'm right now, I don't have much conversation with myself beforehand because it's really, I want to do what I want to do and I'm going to do it. And then it's afterwards. It's how I feel. That's when um, the only conversation I've had beforehand since we started this was the cookie. I took one bite and said, this is gross. Why am I eating it? And then continue to eat it. So I don't know what that was about. But because your hopefully little devil was saying, I, I they told me to eat this. I'm maybe, to maybe it'll it. get better. Well, yeah. is it, is it right now? Right now, it's super important because we're laying a foundation for success, and it's really important that we that we this first week is is super important. We really need to get into our heads if we want lasting changes. So sure. Even if you don't have the conversations right now, if you're not thinking that you have them, we all have them. I guess I'm not tapped into it yet. I'm trying. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think I am either. So, and, and, and there's people that have, have had difficulty. So some people it comes easier and some people it's harder. I just want you to really, you know, try to force it. Even if you have to talk out loud to yourself and just be, just really try to, to get in your head. And, and, you know, even if Sandy, your conversation is, I want the control. This is, 
my, you know, if, if, if that's your conversation, I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm just going to do it. And you might have the little angel say a little tiny bit, or maybe she's just totally quiet. I still want you to pay attention to whatever you're thinking. It's super important. You know, I have um, Mexican food overeating. And what I do is I start with those chips and salsa. And by the time I finish with them, I'm not hungry anymore, but then I have to eat what I ordered. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's totally my jam right there. <laughs> and how do you feel every time? How do you feel like 30 minutes later, an hour later, Paula, after you force yourself to eat? I, I, feel, I feel like a very bad Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Way too so, much food. But you yeah. know, while you're sitting there chit-chatting, those chips and salsa are just gone down, you know, and mm. then they come along and say, would you like some more ch <laughs> chips and salsa? And you don't say no. You say yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what about it when it's self-serve? I lie to myself and I say, okay, I'm not going to eat these tortillas. I'll use the rest of those chips to scoop this food up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, you know. Yeah. And the other thing for me is I'm looking at those chips and I'm having an argument. Are they GMO or aren't they GMO? And I know they're GMO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's Mexican food for me. You know, I was raised by I'm Greek in a restaurant family, raised by a Mexican lady because they were working hard at, at the restaurant. And I always want to go back to those real basic things, you know, and, and I have an argue with myself and I know I recognize the lie while I'm having it, you know, while I'm lying to myself over Mexican food. I don't do that over every kind of food, but over Mexican food, I know I'm lying to myself while I'm scooping up those refried beans. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, tell and I'm telling myself, I don't tell myself I'm going to exercise. I tell myself, you know, that I'll fast in two days. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll juice for two. You know, totally. That's the kind of nonsense I say. <laughs> You're making the deal with yourself. And then when it comes time to, to do that, then you'll have another deal that you'll make with yourself. And yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, Sandy, I just wanted to really quick touch on your, your, your need for the freedom, your need for the control. And I just well, want to... Oh, go ahead. I just want you to think about, do you really have the freedom? Do you ha truly have the choice to say no? Like if, if for me, if a, a plate of fresh, hot chocolate chip cookies were set in front of me, I would convince myself that I could have the freedom to, to, have those chips on, or those cookies, I'm going to do it because I want to. Well, do I really have freedom? I didn't have any control. You couldn't put a, a plate of cookies in front of me and have me walk away from it. There's no chance that would happen. No chance. Well, right out of the let oven. me tell you, Melanie, as soon as they told me I was a diabetic, I began to love black licorice because it had sugar in it. And I hate that before. So, so that's an issue for me. And, uh, and so I'm realizing that that's part of it. And then the other thing is it's hard, it's hard for me to pay attention to my dialogue right now. I will do it. But uh, my dialogue is, is filled with a whole bunch of awful stuff because I'm grieving. So I, uh, I'm, I'm really trying to pay attention to afterwards. Um, but I, I know that there's a dialogue there. I just need to, you know... Yeah, just tap into it. Really try to force yourself in and, you know, even you could even do it like, you know, if you and Rich are out to dinner together, you can ask Rich to help you and or you talk to him, you know? Right. I also could journal. I'm more likely, if I journal, I'm more likely to tell the, the truth, okay. you know? Yeah. yeah. But I, it's really important that you do it at the time <coughs> it's happening too. It's really important that you pay attention to how you talk to yourself into it, how you feel as soon as you made the decision to, to eat that food, you know, how you feel as soon as you take that first bite, 
it's really important to do it at that time. Really be conscious of it then. And I know it's super hard right now, but you will, it will get so much easier. And, and like I said, this is a huge part of switching your thinking and, and changing your, truly changing your relationship. With I, I mean, I can tell it's an important piece. I, I know it is. I just, I'll get, I'll get my head around it. It's just where I'm at right now. I'm, I'm certainly trying. Also, when you're going to the fridge and you're going to eat what's in the fridge and there's not really a choice, it's like leftovers from the night before, just kind of do it, you know? But this week should be easy for you guys because all I'm asking is for you to breathe and to drink some more water. I mean, right totally. now, it should be easy for you guys. So I don't want to hear any excuses. <laughs> not indulging. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about if anyone's gotten any results yet from the or or how they're feeling about doing the breathing Do, is is it annoying like the, the counting like i have done counting breathing exercises before and i was talking to melanie about it when i found out that this was going to be a part of it and we talked about how like you'd start to do like maybe you're going to do five or seven or whatever um and you do like a couple and then you go i'll just do the rest later even though it's only going to take you like 15 seconds or something <clears throat> so i feel like once now that i've gotten the hang of it i i actually it's i think about doing it often even in like the middle of the night and stuff because i'm almost like have this fear that i my breath i'm breathing too short and not deep enough because I've gotten, I have anxiety and my anxiety has totally subsided since I've been breathing a lot more. Well, so uh, that's I, just my like thing. Like Eric said, the shallow breath causes And so if you start panicking, start breathing shallow, it's only going to get worse. Totally. But, I, but I'm breathing deeper in the day just from doing those exercises. Yeah. Yeah, you said yesterday that you were just breathing like that breathing deep automatically and yeah it was great i mean i've been doing it today too i mean i used to get really bad anxiety attacks and i would just it would just get worse and worse because i would start doing you know i'd start panicking and you know especially and my, my health history and then i would think oh no am i getting another heart attack or I, my brain would start going crazy and i just Short, short breaths and then my heart would just freak out and I'd get in a full-blown anxiety attack and that was it. I was oh. done. Yeah. So the breathing. Well, it's, really it's, it's cyclical and it feels cyclical. And the reason it does feel cyclical is because you're producing insulin by breathing shallow, which makes the panic grow, which makes you breathe shallow and on and on and on. It's worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. in any anxiety attack, if you just stop and breathe really slow, Adrenaline, right, Sandy? Right. right. You said what adrenaline. I <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Exactly. Oh, that, yeah, I'm thinking about, oh, yeah, you're right. thinking about the insulin. What, no, uh, I, I, I meant. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, in his video on the first day was, you know, when, when our ancestors were out hunting and they'd walk around a corner and there was a lion, you think yeah. they would breathe? No, they would breathe. <laughs> Because they had yeah. to get their adrenaline so that they could. Adrenaline, it. it's a great drug. What it does is it makes you act. And it is a wonderful thing, but it's not wonderful when you're sitting calmly and there's nothing uh, going external on. going on. Right. And we get that all the time in our lives. You know, you're sitting in traffic and you're going to be late somewhere, or Corey so had a wigging. really happy day today. All kinds of stuff happened. And you know, the, the, we're always faced with that constantly in this society. So we're always breathing like that. We need to consciously do those deep breaths. And like Absolutely. Said, it really does help with everything in your life. I felt mm -hmm. like it's helped me to fall asleep a little bit easier. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. totally profound, but it does help with the relaxation situation. So... But I agree, uh, just to give you some confirmation. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so, Justine, 
How yeah. did you do? Did you indulge? Did you go get some? Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. Tell me about it. Oh, uh, I ate a lot of food at work today. All day. <laughs> Um, and I had a bag of M&M's and I had pasta for dinner last night. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so remember, I'm telling you guys to eat how you would normally eat. Um, well, I do definitely want you to eat what you normally eat, but I want you to be super conscious of it. So. Right. If you would normally do that at work, absolutely, I want you to do it. And yeah, unfortunately, yes, I do. Okay, that's what I would normally do at work. Did you, not every day though. Right. Like day, like not every day. On a special occasion, if somebody brought. Yeah, but that's like all the time at work. That's why it's really hard to try and do the right thing where I am working. You know what I mean? I mean, when I'm working. Exactly. I work in a huge office and people bring food all the time. So. So did you, you know. have any conversations with yourself when you were eating this food? No. I think that's a problem too. There's no conversation. I just say, excuse my language, um, F it. And I just eat it. And I don't even look back. I'm so, being serious. I okay. think that that is a problem. <laughs> yeah, there's no conversation whatsoever. I feel like I'm a totally impulsive eater, and I will just go for it. I might feel bad for a minute afterwards, and then I'm just keep it moving. So, and that's not good. So this week, I'm not asking you guys to pull anything out. It should be pretty easy. All I want you to do is I don't – even if you – if you don't feel like you have the conversation in your head, just try to think of, just just be conscious of it. That's all. I'm not telling you not to eat it. I'm telling you just really, really try to be conscious of it and be conscious of how you feel afterwards. That's like it. right when you're maybe, so what do you think? Like right when you're, we all know what we should not be reaching for, right? So just with that. So right before you <coughs> reach for it, Right before you reach for it, I'm saying, yes, reach for it. But, but while you're reaching for it, I think want about you why to you're reaching for it. Maybe? Just give it a few seconds to just think, have a quick little conversation with yourself. Just say, right. you know, well, it's a special occasion because people brought this food and, you know, yeah. I brought your little angel right. say, well, I might not, should probably be eating it, but. Right. F it, you know. And I, mean, I, I want this. I I don't I'm care. It, it, Melanie, I, I, you to eat it. Like, it doesn't matter what your conversation is. Just try to, to think okay. about it. I think I thought, sorry. I'm sorry. I think that when you, when we get to the point that we say F it, because I get there too. There is something that happens. Bef we're saying effort to something else. We're just not right. tapping into what that something else is. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Good one, Sandy. Well, yeah. um, I know actually why, or kind of like what the reason is, especially at work, and probably not at work also, but a lot of the times at work, it. I think all of us at work do it because it's like instant <clears throat> gratification. It makes our day better. That's what the whole, you know what I mean? Yeah, because maybe work sucks right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and even that together and like working together, we're still at work. And so we always try to make it better. I think that's why people always put it all in. Right. Constantly. But you know? do you really make it better? Well, maybe. yeah. Maybe that's yeah. Really <laughs> it did for, yeah. A second, yeah. for a second, maybe. Yeah. But then when, it, right, you know, but then yeah, it's no, gone it, and then you got to go do it again because, right, gotta, right, yeah. right. We'll keep it going all day. No, right. I agree. And there's camaraderie. Yes. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I yeah, mean, people Sharon. bond with food. <laughs> totally. It's the same with alcohol. People do the same thing with alcohol. Uh -huh. It's a social sure. thing. You know, yep. it's a, 
Yep. Yeah. We just yep. Let's get another one. Hey, you guys want another one? Want another one? Yeah. And, but, you know, yep. Valentine's Day is coming up. So what are we going to do? We're probably going to, you know. Drink beer. <laughs> drink <kidding>. beer. Or, <laughs> you know, I always would go buy my kids treats. And my husband, I'm you know, that was, that was like the treat because that's what we, we well, the advertising yeah. teach, taught us this. We did it as, as children. You know, Easter, there's always the to have some treats, have somebody's birthday. So this is a this is part of your homework. Also, I want to have you all think about what are all the special occasions that you can think of a reason why we're we're letting <coughs> it. from as small as you know a Christmas from as big as Christmas to as small as. Uh, I worked out. Uh, you know, oh, I, I just want you to take the time to just write down all of the, the reasons that we have for for indulging. I don't even have Girl, to have a night out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess there, no is reason a, is a reason, right? Is it just, yeah. If there's a tasty food, that's a good enough reason. Right. Right. Exactly. And because all, I like to chew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to chew all the time. <laughs> trying to think of also like what feelings from the past are you trying to satisfy? You know, just oh. really get in your head. Or, or what events yeah. you associate with certain foods, you know? Like if it's Valentine's I'm, Day, you and you. This you is a psychology class. Off. Either. No, it, it really totally is. is. It is. Yeah, that's why we have to look I would at like it like to that. Say something uh, about my past, and I, I sometimes I think I joke about it, but I think it really might be there might be more to it. But my mm -hmm. mother, growing up, we were not allowed to eat sugar or anything, mm -hmm. and to this day, she's still very strict about what she eats. So. I mean, I'm serious. We were having, like, I used to go spend the night when I was little at certain uh -huh. people's houses because their parents had beef jerky, peanut M&Ms, Captain Crunch, which we absolutely were never allowed to have. So mm -hmm. as we got older and can make our own decisions, and my brothers, one of my brothers is somewhat the same. We, we were just like, we just went rogue. <laughs> and we're like, we can eat and do whatever we want, and we're going to. And mm. sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm still, that is why I do, I eat the things I do. Oh, well, now it's probably just normal, but you know what I mean? I think that's yeah. maybe where it got really, how, how that happened. Maybe you felt like I don't know. deprived, and now you're going to. Yeah. Yeah, now I can do what I, I want because I'm an adult. Yeah. Well, yeah. And we often have a a bit of a, you know, I don't know, mother daughter thing too. Like, yeah. I'm going to spite you. Sure. Because right. Right. 50% on that for sure. And I mean, it's sad because now I'm like, wow, I, I probably should have listened, but you know. Well, and I mean, you know. she's still trying to tell me what to do, so I guess I could listen. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm almost 50. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i'm 53 so you know we're we're, we're good still tell me what to eat and what not to eat i guarantee you that uh-huh and that's yeah so you're still going rogue that's why you're yeah, still doing exactly. it exactly right yeah she as is long my as life. your mom's been in your yep she's been in she your life my the whole life time. food angel uh-huh yes so as Air i life. said earlier notice the rules that are driving your eating decisions you know, yeah. that, that could be a rule that's driving your eating decision. Because you're still rebelling against your mother. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I hope that's not Every what it is. Every day. I'm Every still day. rebelling against everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, so, Corey, do you want to share 
Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Lori. I'm just really enjoying listening to you ladies tonight. Is that okay? I'm just yeah. enjoying listening. Yeah, yeah. you know. There okay. tomorrow, I promise. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. But I'm listening and I'm learning. Okay. And I'm right here with you. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Okay. So, Paula. Yes. Did you have some conversations? Did you do some indulging today? Yeah, I, I'm i not a sugar person. My mother didn't allow it, but I wasn't attracted to it other than ice cream and pie. Those were the Yummy. two things that got me. I didn't really, cookies didn't get it, cake didn't get it. Um, I tended to want salty. So I, I wanted chips and dip and that kind of thing. But I indulge in pasta. So last night it was carbonara. So, you know, I... I prepared it, I ate it, it was a little so more salty than I wanted, and I didn't feel that great eating it, <laughs> even though I thought I would. And I thought, well, you know, besides that, I'll finish this stuff up, you know. Um, but I, I'm aware of a number of conversations. My family was in the restaurant business, so you're serving people, you're feeding people, and it's supposed to be quality, and you always want to give them you know, their money's worth, so the plates were always full, and then, you know, food is love, you prepare it with love, this tastes so good, because there's love in it, all of that stuff, really works at me, and, and actually at an identity level, because it started so young, um, and then, of course, you know, I was, I'm old, I'm 70, I was born in 1947, so wasting food was like the sin of sins. You just right. didn't waste food. Oh, so I had okay, that okay, thing okay. well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, those are the kinds of things that really work on me. Um, and they, they work pretty heavy on me. The other thing is my parents divorced when I was very young, and they had the divorce from hell, you know, the War of the Roses. And so, you know, my father was the one in the restaurant business and my mother's way of rejecting him was to reject some of that good food and I wanted it. So I'm still <laughs> cooking some of that food, despite the fact that they both died sure. in 1980s. <laughs> so I'm wow. seeing some things that I hadn't seen before um, that are in some ways amusing. They might be easier to get rid of than I, th I would have thought. Because, you know, it's 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 a little bit amusing to me that I identify, that my own identity is tied up so much in food. There is a difficulty for me, and that is that I've cooked for so many people for so many years, and I am now by myself. And so I still tend to cook way more food than I need to be cooking. Um, I'm not really good at the 4-1 kind of food preparation so that's going to be a learning curve for me I'll figure it out but it definitely will be a learning curve that's tough also when you when you don't waste yes that's yes. too yeah I, I fortunately I I work three days a week with homeless people so I have lots of places to get rid of food <laughs> And, okay. uh, and they're happy to have it. You know, they're very happy to have it. So, um, you know, that is something that I can do. And it's also something that I can do with, other than liquor with most of whatever I cut out. Because my cutting out will be to remove it from my house. Otherwise, I will, right. I will be looking at it, you know, longingly. Like I'm hypnotized. And I don't want to do that. So... You know, I need to remove some things, and, and those I can fortunately take to a couple of places where we cook for people. Do you have uh, foods that you use for rewards? Or you had talked about your wine. Is there something that yeah. you use to reward yourself? Is there any certain foods? Well, the wine is a reward. I started drinking wine as a very small child. I had a little tiny wine glass. It's just common among Greeks and also among Italians or whatever. It's a little tiny thing. I don't think it held a full ounce. I still have one of those glasses. 
So then when I had kids, I did not drink very much or very often because, you know, there's all these kids in my house and I knew they were going to get in the alcohol and they're going to do that anyway. So I tried not to have that around much when my kids grew up and I was like, hell yeah, I want to have my wine, you know? Mm -hmm. And since then I don't, you know, I just, I just open it and drink it. I don't pay much attention to it unless I have to drive somewhere, in which case I'll wait till I'm back home or I'll stay wherever I'm staying. So wine has become something that I really enjoy and I can afford to enjoy it. And so that will be different for me because that's been kind of my reward for being kind of on my own and, you know, they're grown, they're their own people. Um, and I have old kids, you know, they're grown kids. They're not coming home. Uh, and so that, that will be something. The other thing that I notice is that I am enticed and intoxicated by scent. So I have to, I have to stay away from that. Um, I rarely buy bacon for that reason. I rarely ever buy bacon for that reason, because once I've cooked that, even if I buy just a half a pound, I'm going to eat it. You know, I'm going to eat three BLTs with avocado. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, my son once said you know it's too bad they don't make perfume that smells like bacon and it's, it's stuck in my head I bet they do it is intoxicating it's a very intoxicating scent so that's another thing that I I and I do I do that in the store in the market and at the farmer's market and I'll go to where it smells the best so I need to farmer's market is not so bad because it's all where I am it's all fresh and organic um, and I do grow a lot, so I'm fine that way, but I can see where I'm, where my weaknesses lie. I can see them. Do you have any I, rules for your rewards? Like, you know, it's, or is it, you know, like for your wine, what's your, do you have a rule for it? Like this is, or is it, do you, do you have a glass of wine every night or do you have, like, if I'm having a, a hard day, then I'm going to have myself a glass of wine or... Well, I'll tell you, since I, since I retired, I don't have the same kinds of triggers because it took me four months after retiring to figure out that I could urinate whenever I wanted to. And that wow. in itself was a huge deal because I had spent 46 years not being able to go to the bathroom when I needed to go to the bathroom, having to wait. Somebody else has to cover this or do that or, you know, there's phones or there's whatever. And that was shocking to me. I had never really acknowledge the kind of uh, problems, the really oppressive kind of problems that go on in the work environment. I had not seen them. I'd always thought of it as more like equal pay rather than simple, normal human things. And, um, and it didn't matter where I worked, whether it was in the university or in the hospital, none of those places or it mattered. You, you can't leave wherever you're providing services until somebody covers you. And um, now, w nothing really triggers me to drink wine. It's just pretty mindless. It's pretty automatic. You know, oh, well, I'm going to eat dinner. I'm going to have wine. Or um, it's warm here. It's real sunny and warm. So, you know, I'm going to have some spritzer in the backyard mm -hmm. at 2 o'clock in the afternoon because I've already finished three hours of gardening. Totally. Um, and I've had a shower, you know. So it's just... Those kinds of things that do it, and, and it'll, it'll be a while to get rid of that. The pasta is a, is a big problem because I love it. Um, and I, I don't really even know why I love it. It's some kind of uh, embrace. It's some kind of comfort food, some kind of – and you, all, you share it one way or the other. You end up sharing it with somebody. And sometimes I'll cook it and there's no one to share it with. And I just eat the whole damn thing <laughs> all by myself, you know. And that's what I did last night with the carbonara. But you did notice how it made you feel. Had I you didn't feel last... good. Did you ever notice yeah, that? Yeah, because, before? no, what I did was I actually, that which is new for me, and I do this in meditation about other issues, but not about food, is I focused on the emotion you know and I like I really like pancetta so the you know but I thought this is a little salty and I had never noticed that before and then of course I like that creamy 
pasta. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, I would have been happy with three bites of this, mm. but who, who makes that? Who makes carbonara for three bites? You, just, you know, it'd be like nine noodles or something, you know? Um, and and I, I didn't need it. I knew I didn't need it. After I ate it, I knew I didn't need it. I thought that I could probably never eat it again, which surprised me. That thought did enter my mind. Wow. So I'm going to try, because I love it, I'm going to try some polenta with eggplant and roasted red onions and tomatoes and see if I can walk away from it. Not yet, though. Um, Do you have any of the yeah. pasta left? I just can... want to try. I want to see if, if I feel like, I mean, one of the things about the carbonara is I felt like I could just, I felt like, you know, that wouldn't be too bad. And that's not like deprivation. Um, so I thought I'm going to do that, you know, eggplant parmesan and see if I can, how, how I feel about it. I see think, if I, where are my oh, struggle? Ahead. Where's the struggle where I don't right. want to let go? No. So we're not quite there um, yet this week, Paula. I want you still to, like, if you have some of that pasta left, try and eat it again and pay attention to how you feel again. We're trying to. Oh, no. Oh, no, I ate all of it. <laughs> Oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> I, I had every bit of it. <laughs> it could have said two that people easy. Heavy feeling that you had afterward, and that oh, you yeah. know, maybe it made you yeah. have not sleep so well, or or just just it's, remember that. Paula. Yeah, and I do love I do love the cheese, and so I okay. you know I think boy, it didn't taste that good. Yeah. Paula, can you hear me? Yeah. This is Andrea. I wanted to ask you a question when you said, at what point were you in the pasta where you were thinking that you, you probably didn't want to eat it again, or you didn't think you would have, you, you said something it was, like that. Yeah, when I, it, I, I was into it, not even halfway, and I realized I could just set it aside. Mm -hmm. I thought, no, I, I need to experience this because I'm, I don't want to just reject it. I want to, I want to know what I feel. And I've spent many years about many subjects, not wanting to know what I feel. So right. and I'm aware of that talk about psychology. So I'm right. very much aware of my own kind of, I, it wasn't really anesthetizing myself. It was just kind of saying, I'll compartmentalize. I'm not going to feel that. And right. so I, totally. I ate and then after I was about halfway through it, I thought, you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world if I could never have this again. I mean, I, it really wouldn't. And wouldn't, maybe wouldn't I'm wondering that if that's because you ate more than you actually thought that you needed. And I think that that's what the ticket is, is that Melanie's trying to say, if we eat, you know, the yeah. more those signs are going to come up more, especially if we yes. maybe have too big of a portion. I know that happens for me. As, and yeah. uh, and especially if I eat too much and I go back for that third bowl of whatever, and then it's yeah. too close to bedtime, I'm up at 3 a.m. hating it. Yeah. But it's not so, only exactly. eating too much. It's making the choice to eat that food that that is going to hurt you. That you know. But I think all those things, paying attention to what it does to us. I mean, I think every yeah. step of the way, wherever we start, whatever voice comes up. I mean, since this is so new, I think that the the actual repercussions are more, are louder than the choices. I know it's so we're practicing on deciding what we think about you know making the choice, but it's it's a little bit hard. It's I mean it's a, more of a practice I think to do that than it is to actually you know realize the results. I mean I'm saying that you know I'm going to practice thinking about that, but I think it's easier to have the, you know, get these negative results and, and, and really pay attention to those first than it is to think about everything that you're putting in, right. you know? Well, we, we reflect on so many things that reflecting on eating is really in many ways new to me. Sure, I've always reflected yeah. on feeding other people. And so, you know, it's like, you know, there's, there's 16 people here and I really have food for about nine. How am I going to spread this? I mean, I've spent many, many, many years doing these kinds of things, but I have not spent much time thinking about how I was feeling. And that's right. why that whole thing about 
recognizing that I was intoxicated by scent. And there was Mm -hmm. another thing I recognized afterwards is I recognized had I quit eating at the point that I, I recognized I didn't really want to eat all of that. I probably would have already been full. Right. I just, I just ate past the point my body could give me that feedback way past that point. (laughs) I just want to, to be clear though that I want you to be aware that it's you you didn't feel crappy afterward only because you ate it all you would have still had that feeling if you ate a small portion I don't want the excuse that I feel this way because I ate too much of this food Mm. I want it to be in your head also that that food that was unhealthy feel that way yeah. It, yeah it's worse that you're feeling probably even worse that you ate even more but you're still going to have that yucky feeling if yes. you really yeah. really pay attention to it and for justine i wanted to to point out like paula was saying you know i knew halfway through that my that that i was full but then i decided i'm going to finish this that's like talking to you that's that is your voice. It it might not be a clear voice, but it's it's just it's just you talking yeah. yourself into it. And maybe we're naming it the devil and the angel because either your part of you is talking yourself into it, and part of you is telling you, you know, I, I probably don't really need this. I shouldn't eat the rest of it, you know. Right. But I want this experience, so I'm going to. That's your little devil convincing you. Mm. So yeah. That, yeah. It might not be a clear voice, but that's kind of what we're talking about in the voice in your head. So just, just be aware of that. Right. Right. Like even if you say if you're, if you're, you know, everybody brought a bunch of of goodies, you know, even if you're telling yourself, well, another thing is the free food. Like how do you, how do you pass up free food? You know, I would never. I just didn't buy donuts. I didn't buy them. But if I went to work and there were donuts there, I would grab a donut. It was free yep. food. I was going to eat the free food. Donuts. That's part of out of bed. Sorry, Sandy. Donuts made me get out of bed and go to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a motivator. <laughs> yeah, so... so you know, you might not hear specific voices, but you will start kind of right. laughing at your sleep. It's almost like you're, you're schizophrenic or something. You have these, you're just like convincing yourself and then telling yourself, no, I probably shouldn't. And then, well, you know, just this one time or it's a special occasion or, you know, so-and-so brought this and it's a special treat or, you know. There's always going to be some excuse in that. I just want you to pay, really pay attention to it. Okay. I also you think know, the, di- the dialogue can be, F it, I'm doing this because yeah. I want to. I they think that happen. that is the dialogue yeah. most of the time for me. Yeah, me too. But it's- I'm trying to figure out if maybe there is more dialogue, but that definitely is my... Well, every- there's a reason we're saying F it. Who are we saying that to? You know, I mean, maybe it's the person who said you can't have this, or maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's you you're saying it to. I don't know. But we are saying it to somebody, but why? It may not even be about food, because there, there are many times in our lives when we have very little control over very little of anything and during those times we take control over whatever it is whether it's I'm going to take a shower for longer than eight minutes or you know I'm going to I'm going to work in the I'm going to go out in the yard and I'm going to do something I'm going to stay out there longer because I really have so much to do inside it's just control is a really big issue in our (laughs) lives and particularly I think yeah work when you're working and, you know, there's a boss who's got a boss who's got a boss who's got a boss. And, oh, my God. <laughs> I used to say to mine, could you get on the same page? Because I just want one instruction. And then I would just smoke one cigarette after another, after another, after another, after another, and then go in and say, okay, I'll take a deep breath and see if I can make it through the day. And I always overate at those times and did other things 
in excess at those yeah. times because yeah. of the frustration. That's a good point. Um, Absolutely. And those of you that are struggling with the smoking and wanting to quit that, it's the exact same thing. Listen to that little devil and angel. If you, if you just want to get in your head, if you're thinking about smoking even, just. I'm just thinking about think it right about now. Out and, and don't mind. You you're telling yourself, Andrea. Wait, what? Wait, hang up. You're, telling, you're saying I just want to go calm down. I need to f it. I this is what I want to do, and this is what I do for myself. Yeah, just yeah. pay attention to. Oh, I am. I am. Good. I'll tell you. I I already told Melanie this, but I laid in bed for 20 minutes deciding whether or not I was going to drink coffee today. But oh. until I made the decision that I was, I didn't get out of bed because mm. I had, and, and um, I actually didn't have any half and half. I'm like, okay. So, but based on the fact that if, if I didn't drink coffee, I might've taken a shower and then loaded my car and got ready to work. But instead I didn't take a shower because I had to go to nugget to get the coffee and a lot, a lot, a lot of, but then I'm like, okay, I'm getting a smoothie though. So I can have the coffee and you know, I'm having all kinds of conversations. And then I'm like, well, I have the coffee. So I got to call some friends and chat because I have to have a cigarette before I go to work. So I was an hour late because of this. All that, and I had all those conversations. Yeah. Wow. So that's how I line to my coffee maker. I be like, I, I get yeah. out of bed and I, I don't know how I walk. It's straight to the coffee machine. Yeah. I've been trying to, to quit coffee for a long time because it causes me, uh, it's just like the, it's the gateway drug for me. So that's the deal. So, so Andy just shared something. Do you care if yeah. I share this, Andy? Sure. No, Andy. Barbara, yeah, yeah. Are you okay with me sharing this, what you just said? Yes. Okay. So, and all of you can relate to this um, with one thing or another in your life, but she's saying that she lost her brother to suicide two years ago. I had no idea. I am so sorry. Um, and she had a lot of effort times when she ate. Mm -hmm. Probably not, not just when you ate, you probably had a lot of effort times doing other things that, that, you probably knew weren't so good for you, but you just didn't care. You feel like you're saying F it to the world, but truly you're saying it to yourself. Yeah. Very wise. It's a pain. Yep. Yeah. It's a pain. Yep. I feel you. I think I, a lot of us in this group feel that and get it. it so. It's been so yeah. hard for me to sit back here and not be able to talk because I'm sick and I'm just in my brain raging um, to to just jump through the phone because I, f I feel with some of the different comments that everybody's saying so much of the pain that you all have gone through. Um, and it just seems like this group is filled with people that, you know, whether it's a loss of somebody, um, health issues, um, being on your own now, whether it's a single parent or a widow or, or whatever our pain is and food has become such the great comforter and food, you can control what you eat. So if you want to say, and I'm going to say it right now out loud, if you want to say, fuck it to the world, I've had a shitty life, a shitty year, a shitty day, what I can control is my food. So, you know, whatever rule you've made in your brain of, I can't eat that, I can't eat that. When you're saying the fuck it to the world, you're saying the fuck it to the rule in your head and you're breaking those rules and you're breaking um, whatever constrictions have been placed upon you and um i'm starting to ramble because i lost my train of thought but okay. just know that i've been sitting here empathizing with all of you and agreeing so much with where we're all coming from me too well you, you sound a lot better tonight andy you do sound you better. do and a lot so. i've been drinking hot tea the whole time so that i could get in here and talk with you all nice well um Corey wrote something beautiful on Facebook. It touched me. But I feel like all of us have been brought together for some reason and right? support each other. And I don't, the universe works in crazy ways, but we all need it. 
and we're all here for each other. Last and, night, yeah, there's no accidents. There's no accidents. Yes. Last night when we were done with our group, I told my husband, I said, I've never been in a support group. And with the things I've been through in my life, I could have used several. But I said, support groups are wonderful. We have the most wonderful group. I already yeah. know that. You know, in two days, I was like, these people are amazing. And we're going to be lifelong friends, all of us. I know it. And, you know, we're yeah. Yeah. Super healthy and setting examples for everyone in our life. And, and we're going to be having lots of fun together. <laughs> and Justine. <laughs> Yeah. Justine, did you get your water jug? Do you want me to get your water jug for you? Because I know you're a biz biz at work. I'm going to go to H2O to go in the morning. I can grab you one. Okay, thank you. Would you it's like it? Yes. Okay. <coughs> oh, it's it. cool. <coughs> so, four, good Sorry, guys. Had to does anyone it. have any questions or any input they want to put in? Any Any... We're, we're at our time. If anyone needs to go, please feel free to go. Um, I just wanted to say that what um, Andy said and what you said, and we all collaborated on it, about feeling that feeling. Um, I think that that's something to think about. Like, really saying, you know, fuck it to ourselves. Then we really think about that. Mm -hmm. Or at least I, I do. Yeah. Right. I agree. I agree. Another, another way to think about it, though, is when we're saying that to ourselves, we're hurting the people around us. That's right. That's right. We're hurting the people that love us when we're not taking care of our health. There's <laughs> also. Uh, uh, why we're all here. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's right, Sandy. Oh my gosh! I can't Sandy's been telling me that forever. I found my soul sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So <laughs> thank let's, you, Melanie. Let's go over. Thank you, guys. I feel so blessed, so lucky to have all of you in my life, and, and um, I'm on this journey with you. I'm still learning every day, and and you know, I still struggle sometimes too. But I, I, my voices are so much stronger, and I've come such a long way. And and I I know all of you are gonna just reap huge rewards from this, and. I thank Eric and Meads um, for bringing this into my life, and he's he's an amazing guy. I think he's going to change the world. I really do. He's doing tons of advertising too. Next year, Wild Fit's going to explode, explode. It's been it, it just started, and it's already had like five thousand people go through it, and it's it's going crazy. I think that's we're, good. Maybe people can learn something. That would be good. He's the Elon Musk of uh, of uh, diet. <laughs> it's the true. He's teaching us how what really the true human diet is, and we get everything from that. And we're gonna quit listening to all of that advertising. They're not gonna get in our heads anymore. We're gonna we're gonna make our own decisions and our own choices. And, and a lot of advertising, not just food, but a lot of advertising is, is really, um, it really diminishes who we are. An awful lot of it diminishes who we are as if we aren't good enough. We aren't good enough being ourselves. Right. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. I mean, that's why we buy the product to make ourselves better. Fast, yeah. Yeah. Drunk, yeah. Drunk, yeah. Here, yeah. Whatever. They definitely get into our heads. All right, so what are we doing? What what's what's what are we? Somebody chime in. Pay I gotta go. I gotta I leave. leave. I gotta go pee. So I'm splitting. Okay. Seven forty three. Yeah. Love you guys. Bye. Love I love you. Bye. Bye. I miss you. <laughs> so we're having our water. We're breathing. What else? We're breathing. A dialogue. Your dialogue? Yeah. Are we changing our diet? No. no. I don't care how tempted you are to, you know, skip the Sunday and eat a salad instead. I want I want you to eat how you normally eat. Don't change your diet. Will do. And listen to your voices in your head. Listen to your little schizophrenic self convincing you. Um, let me make sure there's...
I won't, I won't be talking with you guys tomorrow. I've got an appointment after work, but I'll see you Friday. Okay. And like I said, I do record these and I, I I'm sorry that the, it didn't come through, but I'll get that fixed and you'll be able to watch. Um, if, since you're missing tomorrow, you'll be able to watch it anyway. Okay. Perfect. Um, and then also remember to, um, if you can write down all the excuses that you have, what a holiday, their birthdays, or, you know, I just want to hear what your, what your little excuses are. Had a bad day at work, you know, my car broke down, whatever it may be. I just, just try to make a little list or think about it even mentally, because I'm going to ask you guys tomorrow to, to share, share that. Um, I'm going to turn off the recording now.